Welcome to my grandpa's train. Today's video is located in a little different spot. And you might be wondering where I am. I'm not at my traditional basement workbench. I'm actually upstairs at a desk set up as a temporary workspace because my basement is about 50 degrees. It's the middle of winter right now. And it's so cold that I decided to come upstairs and do some projects up here where it's a little warmer. Today's project is we are going to be upgrading this locomotive in the tender from the mechanical reverse unit to something that is in this box. This I ordered from Daly Electronics. Daly? I don't know how to say that. And let's open this up here. And an advertisement. Oh, that's kind of cool actually. It's full color. Uh, pretty rare to see printed color advertisement pages anymore these days. It's all done online, but this is kind of nice. Um, what we want to do is we're going to replace the mechanical reverse unit in the tender with an electronic reverse unit that is in this package. And because the reverse unit in here has been highly unreliable, this is what we're after. This is the universal unit. This one is rated for six amps because this is the large motor 326. Oh yeah. So we have our installation instructions. And what we're gonna do next is take apart the tender and remove the old reverse unit. I am actually really excited about this. So these things are quite expensive, but I am really curious how they're going to perform. Let's get into it. All right, I got the lid off and I read through the instructions. This is actually form fitted to uh, primarily be used in the twin motor diesels. But I got this one because this is a large motor um, in the engine and I just wanted to give it plenty of extra current headroom which will um, allow it to last longer. You won't be pushing the current up to its maximum. They make a 4 amp version of this. This is a 6 amp. They also make a much larger 12 amp. <clears throat> a 12 amp would probably be better suited to uh, twin motor diesel Lionel locomotives as those units are quite large. All right, our task at hand is to remove the um, old mechanical reverse unit, which is not allowing the locomotive to move at all. So uh, we'll do that in a minute here. And I'm back on the large motor 326. And I made some interesting discoveries. So the motor on here is not the correct motor. This is um, the field uh, plates, I guess you call it. And as you can see, there's no wire on it. Let me show you. This is the field winding for the large motor 326. This particular type of wire has failed because of the coating on this has um, dried up and disintegrated. And you, I believe, you can actually see right above my thumb, there's a patch of copper just exposed. So the coating on this, and there's another patch right here on this end, um, the coating on this wire failed and consequently shorted out. It's from the mid 50s where enameled wire during the Korean War was not readily available. And um, whatever this coating is has failed after 70 something years. Um, this is the new wire that I have. This is new, brand new enamel coated wire. You just get it off Amazon. It should be the exact same wire gauge. And I'm going to be rewrapping this field coil for the large motor. A couple things to note about this. Um, this wire is 24 gauge, so is that. And I verify that with Tom Barker's guide. However, um, this wire is weird. It's actually heavier, and I wonder if that heaviness is this type of coating. This chunk of wire is uh, like 28 feet long. Um, I measured it, and it weighs uh, like 22, 24 grams. This piece of wire, this is the new one. I cut it extra long, so I have some room to make adjustments as necessary. So this is 31 feet long, and it weighs 18 grams or 
uh, one ounce of wire and 0.7 ounces of wire for the new wire. My scale does both. The failed field coil winding also took out a finger on the brand new um, fingerboards, as you can see this one. Let's see if I can... Uh... Yeah, I just replaced these and you can see there's one finger there and the other one isn't. So it actually burnt up that finger and it's a brand new piece of copper on there. So that um, field winding has catastrophically failed. I am going to begin rewinding it and you will um, join me back once it's done. Oh, and also I did some um, impedance testing with a DCR, so direct current resistance type meter. Um, and the field winding on the small motor is about 1.2, 1.3 ohms. The uh, DCR impedance on the large motor, which had failed, was 0.6 ohms. So as far as the motor was concerned, it was a complete short. All right, I'll be back. Hopefully this rewind is successful. And um, if it is, you'll see this motor running again in just a little bit. Well, after a full day's worth of work, just about, I finally was able to repair the field coil on the large motor Hudson. And um, this took a little bit of trial and error and a lot of patience. Getting this to wrap correctly is not an easy task. Sure, you can wrap it on there quickly, but it will be a big giant ball and it won't be um, lined up correctly. In fact, I'll show you. i just move this back here. This is a field winding of a small motor, and you can see that the winding is pretty rectangular and the wires are wrapped really, really straight. So I actually put a piece of tape on the top just to kind of hold the top of the bundle in place. One of the formers broke off, um, so that should hold the windings tighter together, at least on the top. Now, I did note that it's important to get the windings as tight as possible, which means working patiently and um, making sure that it doesn't crisscross too much. The only crisscross I have is on the top layer. Also, I ended up putting more windings on the outside edges and making it shallower in the middle so that the armature would actually not hit it because if you wrap too much in the middle, um, you could potentially hit the, the armature could potentially hit the field and that would be a bad day. It would wear off the coating and then it would short out. So, um, this is not quite 40 feet. I ended up with, originally, um, this wrap was about 42 feet long and the first I took off about three feet and then I took off another foot. So we're looking at 38, maybe 39 feet of wire on this. So we're gonna test this out and I'll show you that it runs uh, most efficiently at uh, 15 volts, actually. <clears throat> so don't mind the wiring mess. I'll have that cleaned up in short order. And uh, you can keep an eye. This is set to ammeter. So it should show a reading of 1.25 1, 1 amps, give or take. Uh, you'll see it as the engine or the amperage actually stabilizes as the motor runs for a few seconds. As it gains speed, it draws more amperage, then it steadies off a little bit. So let's fire this up. I'm going to kind of hold this thing in place so it doesn't bounce off my um, holder uppers. So I'm going to open it up to full 15 volts and you should see the current draw, draw um, go up to like one and a half amps and then it'll actually settle back off. So it's about 1.18. The windings are not getting too warm. Yeah, down at seven volts, we're one, 1.1. 1 .1. I'm gonna turn it off here. You can see that it's actually running about as good as I think I can actually get it to go, which isn't too bad for pretty much a first attempt at hand winding a field. I'm glad I didn't have to do the armature.
Boy, that would be a nightmare. Um, I will also note that the chuffer in this thing is extremely loud. It runs really good now, uh, but it runs most efficiently at 15 volts, I think I mentioned, and um, the field doesn't get, it gets warm. It gets warmer than the small motor fields because they're just professionally built and they don't get that hot. This one gets a little warm to the touch. It actually gets um, hotter at uh, seven volts and it runs cooler at 15 volts, which is kind of weird. Um, it's best efficiency maybe at 15 volts or this armature actually moves air because it's so big, it spins air past and helps it cool off maybe a little bit. So that is the progress on the 326 large motor. We're gonna get this ball wired up. I'm gonna install some new wires and then um, finally get this thing back on the layout and test it out. All right, the 326 large motor is on the layout and is ready for its final test runs. I have a fairly heavy load behind it to see how well this new motor performs. And uh, let's fire it up and see what happens. Also, the new electronic reverse unit is silent. It doesn't make any clicking noises. Uh, let's blow the whistle and get her going. All right, I'm actually gonna switch the power supply to DC now. And the DC actually does work with the reverse unit, which is nice. This way I can monitor the amperage and voltage going to the locomotive. This locomotive under full load should draw about two and a half amps. That's pulling this entire train. And that's also powering the headlight, the smoke unit, and the light in the coach. All right, let's see how it goes. All right, this locomotive is done and ready to go. So it looks like the wire wrapping on that field coil made this locomotive run like new again. Thanks for watching my grandpa's train and tune in next time to see what else I'm working on.